securitate. Brendan Horan. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. New Zealand First asked for these bills to be read in the bright light of day so all of New Zealand could gain a greater understanding of each grievance, the process, and to witness the settlement. In many settlements, iwi are given land in a ceremonial fashion and then return it. And so have been more than reasonable, so that awareness is gained, apologies accepted, and a commitment to move forward into the future is understood and undertaken. Mr Speaker, we have seen four prior settlements today, and in earlier speeches I have referred to the opportunities afforded iwi with financial settlements. But let no one in this House or anywhere in New Zealand believe that money is being thrown at Māori. The total amount paid out to all Māori tribes is not billions. In fact, it pales in significance when compared to asset sales and the $1.7 billion South Canterbury finance bailout. It may surprise you, sir, that the total amount of settlements in the history of New Zealand to date is less than $1 billion. $955 million. Now, having said all of that, I'm sure that no one would begrudge a little money going to our East Coast NPC team, who I am told have endured the presence of uh, Parikura Horamia for many years. <laughs> but, Mr. Speaker, I would like to point out to Iwi with new finances that there is a powerful tool on our doorstep that can revolutionise the retraining and upskilling of our people with new skills and competencies. The biggest convergence that the world has ever seen is about to happen, and that is broadband power coming together under the same umbrella as browser ubiquity. And that convergence will bring about change in human behaviours in the new education systems related to that convergence. Now, the social infrastructure of Fano, Hapu, Iwi advantages Māori for the new broadband literacies that will be required to trade and operate successfully in the new commercial world. And I look forward to seeing intergenerational learning, intergenerational caregiving, health and support systems, and intergenerational and cross-iwi networks. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First offers congratulations to Ngāti Puro on the culmination of a journey where reparation was first sought during the Muldoon government. It has been a long, gruelling journey, and there have been many difficulties of varying nature. One being communication, because of the relative isolation of what some would say is the most beautiful part of New Zealand. Now, our East Coast roads are not like the smoothly travelled highways of Auckland, and journeys can often be delayed due to slips, such as the one currently blocking the uh, Waiweka Gorge, which is the main route from Gisborne through to Whakatane and on to the port of Tauranga. There is, of course, the coast road, but you only have to see a logging truck coming at you from around a blind bend as you are travelling from Tōrere through to Takaha to know how scary that can be. <laughs> now, I know the East Coast well through my fishing and uh, surfing sojourns as I grew up in Whakatane. But if you've never been on this stretch of coastline, you're missing out. It's amazing, and you only have to see the children fishing, gathering kaimoana, and riding horses around bareback to know what a special place, what a special piece of country this is, and also a slice of Kiwi life that is precious. Another major challenge for Ngāti Puro was the cost of World War II. The shocking loss of so many promising young Māori from the 28th or Māori Battalion. 
This war deprived Ngāti Puro of many future leaders who gave their lives for our country so far away from their East Coast shores. Now, in 2008, I had the privilege to be present at Te Poho o Rāruri Marae for the launch of the book Sea Company, written by Monty Suta. It is a wonderful account of the mana of Ngāti Puro and the soldiers of the Māori Battalion. Now, modern New Zealanders know of Corporal Apiata VC, but, sir, I want every member in this House to remember the peerless hero of the Māori Battalion, Ngāti Puro's warrior son, Moana Nui Aki Wenaramu, VC. And let no one doubt the ethic of service that this tribe has shown to fellow New Zealanders. And it was the giant of all Māori parliamentarians, Sir Apirana Nata, who characterised the efforts of his tribe and the battalions as being the price of citizenship. I'd like to remind ourselves that this tribe not only have affection for their land, but they have a mighty river, the Waiapu. Settlements are not only about economic opportunity, but they are a chance to improve Māori participation in natural resource management. And I look forward to the implementation of the vision and strategies that Ngāti Puro leaders have for their tribe. Sir, Ngāti Puro are no strangers to New Zealand first. <laughs> now, I am, I am listening to my fellow members, and in keeping with the encouragement to be modest, and like the kumara that never boasts of its sweetness, we are proud to support the elders, the chiefs, and all the leadership and their strategies to lead the tribe forward to benefit not only Ngāti Puro, but the entire East Coast and the Greater New Zealand. Kia ora. Uh, Moana Mackey, this is to be a split call. Thank you. For, for, bell with one minute to go. Thank you, Mr.